today we are talking DIY Christmas pajamas for the entire family and we're doing it on the cheap. So I'm sure everybody has seen the Instagram posts and the Facebook posts and the everything else posts of people dressing their families, their entire families in the same pajamas for Christmas. I happen to think it's adorable. <laughs> After the birth of our second child, my sister-in-law and I always started putting our, all of our kids in the same pajamas and like taking a family picture of them on Christmas Eve when we were all hanging out. Last year, I decided I wanted family pajamas for all of us. And I started looking around online and some of the websites that were affordable, some of them had great reviews, some of them didn't have great reviews, but even the ones that had really good reviews, I would always find reviews in them that were like, they fit small, um, they fit really short, stuff like that. And all of the adults in our household are like either close to six feet or over six feet. So the fit has to be right. Also, we want to be comfortable. Add that to the lack of plus sizing on a lot of those websites and it just, it wasn't going to work. So I thought, okay, well, no worries. We'll just, we'll just make them. I sew. What else are you going to do? Today we're going to talk about pajama bottoms and then next week we're going to talk about pajama tops. I am wearing my jammies from last year. This is a shirt. Mm. Now these pajamas are meant to be a quick and easy make because let's face it, we all have like a ton of stuff to do this time of year. So I don't actually make the shirts. I purchase the shirts and then I customize them. This year, uh, we're gonna do like a DIY screen printing thing, which you can see next week. But today we're gonna talk about pajama pants. And one of the best ways that you can keep your costs down while you're doing pajama pants for your entire family is simply to not have to buy patterns. And if you have comfy pants, you really don't need to buy a pattern. So we're gonna talk about how to clone your existing pajama pants or comfy pants. They can be sweatpants, they can be anything. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is if you're trying to copy like a yoga pant but you've bought a woven non-stretch fabric, that's kind of not gonna work. But if you or anybody in your family have a woven fabric, like sweatpants or comfy pants, pajama pants that fit you, you can totally get your pattern off of those. So today we're gonna cover that, how to make your pattern. We're gonna talk about how to measure the waistband elastic and how to put that waistband in. I also put a drawstring, so I do buttonholes on the grown-up pants, but I don't worry about it for the kids. So if you can manage to find a decent deal on fabric, this is really not that expensive of a Christmas tradition. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so here I have my nephew's pants. I have one side, one leg, completely flatly laid out and weighted down. As you can see, the seams are kind of sitting on top and the back piece of the fabric is kind of curved up and around. That's because the back panel of the leg is always going to be bigger than the front panel of the leg. So I have to take that into consideration when I do my seam allowance. I need to not really put as much seam allowance for the front panel as I do for the back panel. For the back panel, I'll need to cut seam allowance plus the amount that is curved around. I'm just gonna put the second leg sort of piled on top. It doesn't really matter what that's doing as long as my lines are all straight. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I have to add seam allowance as well as I'm just adding a bit of extra length because my nephew is tall and lanky. But typically you do wanna make sure that you add seam allowance to the bottom of the legs as well as add seam allowance and enough extra on the top to fold your elastic over. I'm gonna be using this three quarter inch elastic so I need to make sure that I have some seam allowance and that I can wrap that elastic um, around. Once I have those two lines marked, I can go ahead and cut my pants out. Okay, once again, because this is the back panel, I'm cutting an extra wide strip around the outside so that I am accounting for the seam allowance plus the amount of fabric that is folded onto the top of the garment. Now that crotch seam, I didn't have to cut as far away because my seam is folded right on the seam line. But then when I go back down the inseam, I'm once again cutting a wider swath. All right, now if your pants have a bit more room in the caboose, um, the fa amount of fabric that's gonna fold in from the back panel is gonna be considerable. So it's not gonna be something that you can just sort of easily give a little bit more room. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to 
measure from the intersection of the inseams and the crotch seams out to the edge of where the crotch seam is folded and that's gonna I'm gonna need that information okay so this is my inseam line right here it's hard to see that is the crotch seam pardon my copy finger drawing so this piece here I have to account for that when I cut up my pants because that's folded in right now and so I can't like fold that out to make it lay flat. So I took this measurement on the crotch seam right here where the fabric is folded into the crotch. And I'm gonna take that measurement and transfer it outside the garment. These pants were a little bit baggy on me so I actually like decrease it just a tiny bit. So once you have that mark, if you have a design curve, you could absolutely like just use that to get your lines. But what do you do if you don't have a design curve? Lots of people don't. So what you can do is you can take your ruler and just through several points on the leg, measure how much from the seam to the fold, and then continually mark what that distance is out from the fold. Now when I connect the dots, I will have my cut line. Now you'd also want to add seam allowance to this. All right, once I have all my pieces cut, um, before I assemble, I'm just taking a little scrap of iron-on interfacing that I have, and I'm cutting two little squares out of it. Because I'm going to put a drawstring in my pants, so I'm gonna take those two little pieces of interfacing, and on the front panel, near the crotch seam, I'm just going to iron that down. And this is where I'm gonna put the buttonhole for my drawstring to come out. I just want that interfacing there to give a little more stability to my fabric while I put the buttonhole in. Next, I'm going to measure out where I want my buttonhole to be. And what I'm taking into account is I have this one inch woven elastic, which I'm going to fix onto the edge of the fabric and then I'm gonna roll it down. So I wanna make sure that my button, once I've rolled that elastic, is going to be, that buttonhole is gonna be sitting on the top of the elastic. So I've got my buttonhole foot with a little button in it and I've just used that to stitch my buttonhole. Now my favorite way to cut open buttonholes is I stick a pin um, right on the inside of the buttonhole slit, then I take my seam ripper, pop it through and slide it up to the pin and the pin stops me from going right through the buttonhole. Voila! Now that I have both of my buttonholes done, so both front panels have buttonholes, I'm going to put my pockets on. Um, I don't know what happened to the footage of me cutting out the pocket. Um, I really, I didn't have a pattern. I just kind of cut a pockety shape pocket. That's, that's as scientific as I got. Um, I'm going to just use the grid on my mat to measure out three inches and I'm gonna place my pocket three inches from the top of my fabric. And that's because two inches of that is going to be my waistband, right? I'm gonna use that one inch elastic and fold it over. So this will place my pocket about an inch down from my waistband. As you can see, I have already gone around my pocket edges with my serger. You can finish your seams however you like. And actually, after I got done my pockets, my serger and I had a very big disagreement and it needs to go into the shop now. So I'll be finishing the rest of my seams with a zigzag. Once I have all of my pockets pinned on, I am going to go and stitch down the edge of the pocket. All right, pockets are attached. Now I need to go all the way around all of the edges and finish those edges. And like I said, I'm gonna be doing those with a zigzag. Now that all my edges are finished, I'm going to take the two front panels and the two back panels and I am going to attach the crotch seams. I feel weird saying crotch, but like gusset doesn't really sound any better either. So I don't know, we'll just stick with crotch for now. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to stitch this seam on the front panels and the back panels. All right, so I have a front piece of my pants and I have a back piece of my pants. And I'm going to lay out one and then lay the other one right sides together on top with the pockets hanging out. Now when I'm stitching this together, I wanna to be very careful that my um, pocket edges, where my pocket opening is gonna start and stop, that they are matched up. And I kind of do that by like pushing on the fabric so I can feel where the actual fold is of where the pocket is folded over, just so I can really make sure that those are lined up nicely. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. 
Once I know that the top and bottom of my pocket are matching exactly, I can pin out the rest of the garment. And once I have both sides pinned, I'm going to go and stitch all the way down to the pocket, around the pocket, and then down the leg. Alright, now we have the inseam to do. I'm going to make sure that both of my crotch seams have the seam allowance folded open so that I don't end up with too much bulk on one side. Once I have the intersection of my inseam and my crotch seam pinned together, I'm just going to follow that inseam and pin it all the way down from that intersection all the way to the bottom of the leg. And then of course, I will stitch that out. All right, so I have my elastic here and I really prefer to get something that's quite hefty for a waistband. Um, I use this woven elastic in comparison to something that's like really super stretchy and super thin. The thinner stuff just, once you run a seam through it, it's just not, it's not gonna hold up. So I use um, the thicker stuff. Now I've tested this around my waist so I know that it's going to be comfortable. But if you're making pants for somebody that you don't have with you, then you can take their waist measurement and usually take about three to four inches off and make your elastic that size. Next, I'm going to attach my two ends together to make a loop. And I'm going to fold that loop in half so that I can mark my two even halves and I will put those marked sections on the front seam and the back seam. So I know for sure that I have exactly half of my waistband for half of my pants. Then I'm not gonna end up with all the bunching or all the gathering just on one side. Now, to pin out the rest, this can be kind of tricky because you need to stretch it. Um, so what I do is I stretch out my elastic to the length of my fabric, and then I just sort of use my fingers to pinch a section, and I hold that pinch together until I can stick a pin on it. And then I just keep repeating that stretch, pinch, pin process until I've got it all on. All right, I have it all pinned, which means I have my fabric evenly distributed along my elastic. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zigzag stitch right along the edge of the elastic and the fabric. And I will pull that taut as I sew. All right, here we go. It is fixed on at the very top edge. So now I'm going to just take that elastic and fold it down. And then I'm going to go one more time and zigzag along the edge of that as I'm pulling it taut. And there I will have my waistband. All right, waistband is done. Now it is time to do the hem on my pants. So I'm just gonna fold that under as long as the hem allowance that I left, and I'm going to zigzag that along the edge as well. Very last step, I need to put my drawstring in, so I'm just sticking a safety pin onto the end of my drawstring, and I'm going to feed that through my waistband. There we go, it's all through. Now I just need to make a couple of knots on the ends of my drawstring, just so that I don't wind up having it fray out on me. And I'm done. Well, there we go. I have my awesome pajama pants, which I know will be my comfy go-tos for the rest of the year, Christmas or not. I think they turned out pretty well and I'm stoked to wear them on Christmas day. So there you have it, cozy jammy pants. Honestly, my husband, myself, and my sister-in-law we have been wearing ours all year. Like they're, when my husband gets home and takes off his work boots and his coveralls, those are the pants that he puts on because they are so dang comfy. And I'm so happy that we put pockets in them and drawstrings, like they're just, they're perfect. So they're starting to get a little bit threadbare now. I'm happy that I get to make more so that um, I'm gonna be set up for the next year. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you wanna find out how to customize store-bought shirts, we're gonna be getting into that next week as I finish our pajamas for our family. So until then, make sure you do all the things, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it out, and subscribe if you haven't already.